Do you feel like you've hit a plateau in your journey with the mandolin? Well, we can all feel like that from time to time, but there are some things that you can focus on to help ensure steady growth. So in this video, we have 10 tips that anyone can use to get better and to get better faster. So I am here in Greenville, South Carolina, on my way to meet up with mandolinist Wyatt Ellis, who, even though just being 15 years old, has been making some huge waves in the bluegrass and acoustic music scenes. He's made appearances on the Grand Ole Opry. He's collaborated with some of the best musicians in the business. So I figured if anyone has something to say about getting better faster, be Wyatt. And maybe one other special guest that you might see at the end of this video. Stay tuned. I see Wyatt Ellis. What's up, Wyatt? Hey. How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Doing good. Yeah, great to see you. Good to see you. Dude, we picked the hottest day in the summer to do this. Are you I okay? think so, yeah. It's, Wearing it's all black. It's pretty hot out here, yeah. <laughs> we were talking on the phone the other day, and I think I interrupted like a really deep music listening session. You're listening to the Stanley Bros, oh, yeah. right? Good stuff. Dude. Yeah. You must listen to so much music. Who do you listen to these days? Oh man, I love everybody. I've been listening to some some jazz, uh, of course the Stanley Brothers, uh, a lot of country, a little bit of everything. I, I love it all. Yeah. Listening to a lot of good music, especially good mandolin players. Definitely. That's one of the best ways to know what tone you want, to know what licks you want. All this stuff is so important. Yep. You know, I, I've always loved your playing Wyatt, but Thank especially yeah. over the past few years, you really, you really just exploded in musical growth, and I've heard you yeah. say that one of the biggest things that helped you grow faster was learning to play by ear. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Once I started to um, learn to play by ear, you know, I was just able to go out to jam sessions and just figure out what they were playing quickly. You know, just like that was my biggest way of just learning how to play anything I kind of wanted to on the spot. Playing by ear just opens you up to a world of possibilities. Like yeah. learning to read tab or sheet music is great, but if you can hear something and then learn how to play yeah. it just by listening, you can't beat that. Nope. Dude, I'm stoked to get to hear you guys Dude, you must play along with a lot of recordings, don't you? I do, yeah. I love to play along with um, anything. You know, I love uh, playing along with um, the old stuff from Monroe all the way up to the new stuff like Thiele. You know, I love, I love it all. Totally, man. There's something about playing along with recordings where it just it makes you a better musician. You, know, you get to A, B your mandolin playing against some of your heroes. You get to soak up some of their tone, their timing, and the way that they approach a solo. And I think it's way better than a metronome because yeah. you have like the form of the song baked in, right? You have to keep yeah. up with the chord changes, and which is tough. Sometimes like the feel of the music is a little different than the feel of the metronome, you know? And the more you can get used to that, I think, the better off you'll be. All right, Wyatt, man, every time I see online, you're out there like collaborating with some amazing yeah. artists. Like, what was it recently? Del McCurry Band, was, Marty yeah. Stewart. You played on stage with Billy Strings before, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's amazing, man. Like, what do you think like playing with that caliber of musicians has done for your progress? Yeah, so much. You know, just um, getting out and actually when I was first starting out, just getting out and playing with anybody was, was a really big deal. And, you know, just um, as I um, got a little further along, I had so many great opportunities to play with uh, great musicians, and that's been awesome as well. The rest of you viewers out there, if you can find a way to play with musicians who are even better than you, that's a great way to progress faster because they're going to raise you up to their level. You're going to learn so much just oh, by yeah. trying to tread water with mm -hmm. amazing musicians. And that's why I want to try to pick a tune with Wyatt here now because I know there's a lot that this guy can teach me.
so good, man. It's so good. Well, speaking of playing with other musicians, I feel like having a music community is so important for that. Just like having people it nearby is, yeah. you who are into the same music as you are. Going to the jam is so important. Having regular contact with other musicians at like festivals or you ever done music camps before? Back yeah, in the yeah, I've done I've done music camps uh, here and there, and even uh, connecting with different musicians online is a great way to. Uh, you know, just get to know the community. That's right, yeah, even if there aren't people nearby, there's so many resources online, right? You started learning yeah. online at first, I right? did, yeah, so um, right before the shutdown, I was going to all the local jams and just like trying to, you know, play with as many people as I could, but then that got shut down, so I decided to connect online. Dude, and, and speaking of online, I know you have taken some lessons over the years, both online and in person, from some of like, the best players in the business, right? Like yeah. Bobby Osborne, you said, right? Yeah, I and did. Chris Henry, and then yeah. and Sierra. Sierra, right? Yeah. I was gonna say Sierra I Hull, did that, uh, which eight or nine month apprenticeship with her that really, Dude. really was pretty awesome. That's so cool, yeah. man. Speaking of which, spoiler alert: I hear that you are making a special appearance with none other than Sierra Hull tonight. I am. Table, yeah, which... it's gonna be gonna be a lot of fun. We'll try to pick a old Monroe tune or something. Whoa! Who knows? I'm so excited to hear. That's gonna be awesome. That's some, Pretty some cool. wood right there, oh, man. Yeah. Should turn that into a mandolin. Maybe. No, it's too pretty. Wouldn't want to do that to a tree. <laughs> I feel like it's really easy to get bogged down when you're practicing because oftentimes we set like these huge goals. Like, I want to be as good as Wyatt Ellis one day. And then it's hard to know how to take action on a goal like that. So I think making your practice actionable is so important. Like instead of saying, I want to be a better player one day, Maybe just start by learning a few tunes or yeah. learning like the B flat major scale, which is kind of tricky or, you know, going to the jam. That's a huge goal as well. What what are some goals that you usually think of? in your Yeah. Training? So um, when I was starting out, I just wanted to, you know, learn as many tunes as possible. But, you know, I also had to do some of the grunt work, like, you know, slowing it down and trying to figure out all the scales that would help me the most. Totally. Yeah. Scales, arpeggios, all that stuff. They're really specific things that you can work on every day to get better and faster. Yeah. <laughs> this is where Sierra and Wyatt are playing tonight. This is so exciting. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Well, if you're up for warming up a little bit, you wanna try 450 deer? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Let's do it, man, you could do it. So why I know you have a, a brand new record out, right? I do, yeah. Um, I released it back in February, February 2nd, and it's got all of my mandolin heroes on it. You know, uh, David McLaughlin, Marty Stewart, Dominique Leslie, Sierra, of course, um, just about everybody. It, it sounds great, too. You gotta go check it out oh, online. Yeah. There's some links down below. But I wanted to mention that, too, because recording yourself can be an amazing way to get better faster, right? You're putting yourself under that microscope. You know, I just recently started, you know, recording, um, through um, recording software and microphone and everything and just uh, getting down and really just like picking it apart and but before that you know I just went on my phone and you know turned on the camera and recorded and uh, you know just listened back to it. You can just use your phone, use your computer, it's a great way to record yourself and to be able to go back, listen, make changes, make tweaks and get better. So yep. record yourself. All right that's Sierra Hole's bus right there. We're about to go in for sound check here, but Wyatt, one quick question. I know folks are curious. How much do you practice in a day? So, um, you know, when I was um, really in the pandemic, when I was stuck at home, I was practicing, you know, probably three hours a day or something, you know, three or four hours a day. But, you know, sometimes when you're traveling around playing music, you don't have nearly as much time. But if you can find at least, you know, 15 to 30 minutes a day just to sit down and practice, I feel like you can continue to get better. It doesn't need to be a ton. I heard the story of when you were first working with Sierra that you didn't put down your mandolin for three straight days. Is that true? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, here we are. You ready? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun.
take a break for a second. We gotta let Wyatt and his trio do a sound check here. Check this out. first met Wyatt here one of the things that I told him is I was like I think you really have to work on stuff that's going to excite you like you can work on mm -hmm. scales and arpeggios and you know like theory kind of things all day long but I know for me as a young person I had the most fun when I was actually making music on the instrument so I think finding you know tunes learning fiddle tunes like the one we just played yeah. that was the thing early on I mean that really got me fired up about plan. And so, of course, there's so much that you, you discover along the way and all those other elements are key to really growing and becoming a complete musician. But I think, you know, if you want to be a bluegrass mandolin player, starting to dive in to really learning the roots of the music and learning these tunes are so crucial. And, you know, if you can find one good mandolin record that you're in love with, that you can sit down with and learn every note of, not just the solos, but also, you know, the rhythm playing. Um, for me, I was, you know, so in love with albums that, like, say, Alison Krauss had made, learning all the Adam Steffi solos, or, you know, Chris Thiele albums, things like that, sitting down with Sam Bush albums, um, and then that kind of led me backwards to sitting down with things like, you know, Bill Monroe, and, um, you know, kind of older, old school bluegrass. So I just think whatever, wherever you start, it's, you know, whether you're starting in the more traditional, like you, yeah. you came to bluegrass being a big fan of Bill Monroe yeah, through, first. Yeah, through traditional. And then and sort of worked your way. Started, worked out. Yeah, yeah, worked your way out. And I think no matter where you're going, it's to get that full scope is, is uh, important. So you have to start with what fires you up the most, whether yeah. that's super traditional, whether that's some contemporary stuff, but there's no getting around learning the roots mm -hmm. of the music. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here right now. This is awesome. <laughs> you guys rock. <laughs> you rock, Dave. <laughs> no. You rock. No, 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 no. You want me to interview you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Let's go. Break a leg.
good. Oh my word. <laughs> oh man, I'll be riding high in that for a while here. You know, one more tip before we go is that you really have to enjoy playing the mandolin. If you're just trying to get better for the sake of getting better, that won't last you. You really have to be obsessed with playing it. You have to want to not put down the mandolin because it's so fun. And um, that's so evident and why in Sierra's case and something I want to aspire to more. So go out, enjoy the mandolin. Huge thanks to Wyatt and Sierra for being a part of this video. Go check out their music. And if you like this video as well, consider subscribing and joining over on Patreon at the link below. But lots more videos coming soon. Until then, happy picking.